reflection video on the things that I think I've learned over the last 12 months. Now, they could be work-related or they're basically personal, sort of related to myself. And I thought I'd share it with you guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you knew about some of these things and, and what you have learned, you think, over the last 12 months. Uh, the first point is furlough, okay? Am I the only one that didn't know what furlough meant? I can't have been. I can't have been. Guys, I Googled it, okay? So um, if you're one of the clever people that did know what furlough meant, Leave me a comment and let me know that you did know, and obviously the rest of the video. If you and if you didn't, own up, own up like me, and say you did not know what furlough meant. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, no, let me know. Let me know what you think about the the rest of the points here as well. Um, so in the next point is around cases, right? I've done something wrong this year, and I'll tell you this, and it's probably because of the pandemic and the situation. But it's almost like every case I've been doing. We've, have been like three times more of the work okay so the same money for three times a little more of the work three times resources three times staffing three times work and that's simply because it could be because of people's circumstances people lose their jobs lost their jobs more um, you've got properties down valuing you've had people decide not to sell because property have down valued you got all sorts of things so um, you know, we had the beginning of part of the year, it was Brexit, it was really funny, it was an up and down market, people were not selling, they were not quite sure, and then because COVID hit, you know, it was a bit wobbly, and then you had the stamp duty holiday, which is sort of picked up, um, so it's, it's interesting, I've, I've certainly, I've learned that the way we work is it doesn't matter, because I don't charge up front, okay, whatever the client, how difficult it is, whoever the client is, we don't charge up front. We've ended up doing like three applicants for different people because of their circumstances, but we've honoured everything. So I'm not saying I'm going to I'm going to increase my charges or anything like that. I just need to, um, you know, it's just a reflection point of, you know, for me understanding what I could do better um, to learn from this experience. Okay. The third, social bloody media. Wow. So we set up this channel last year. It's been, you know, under a year now. And I've learned a lot from doing it. Um, and I've learned about social media. I've more recently learned about people, learned about positive energy, negative energy. Uh, I've, I've uh, found out how powerful uh, emotions can be over the internet, how uh, you can have a real big influence on people, negatively and positively. Um, and you know, social media is really, I still don't get, by the way, I still don't get Instagram. What is Instagram about? I've had to upload my videos and I do upload my videos on Instagram, guys. So I'm on the Instagram and I'll leave you one. But I don't get it. I really don't get it. I know what YouTube's about. I know what Twitter's about. I know what Facebook's about. Instagram, I just don't get, okay? Here's a photo of me with an apple. Here's a photo of me with a car. Here's me having a burger. Well, this is, look at me, look, look at this hotel that I'm in. Oh, look at this flashy car. I just, I don't get Instagram, guys. Please let me know. I've probably got the most boring Instagram uh, channel there, but I don't get it. So if you do get it, let me know. Let me know why you like it, okay? Let me know what your preferred sort of medium, in social media, uh, sort of thing. is it Twitter, YouTube? What do you, what do you want uh, a lot? So I've learned TikTok. I've learned about social media, and I don't know if you guys are doing a lot more social media, sort of, you're on there a lot more. But I've certainly learned about that, okay? I've learned about deals that I've lost, okay? So it's really frustrating when you lose a deal, when you lose a client, okay? Especially if you haven't fallen out with them, and I've fallen out with a few as well, and I will touch on that later. Um, but, you know, I've lost some deals because of, you know, the client may have got a better deal somewhere else. Simple. They've just, you know, I've given them a deal, I thought, that I'd, thought I'd given them a best deal, but they've got a better deal, whether they've got a special relationship, generally happens with commercial deals as well. So commercial deals maybe because they've got an arrangement or an existing relationship with a lender, uh, because that's how it works on the commercial front. Um, maybe it's on a bridging finance. Now bridging finance is a real funny one because it's not just about rate, it's about that lender, it's about that policy, it's about, now a lot of the deals that we've lost, the last one, I, I tell you this, I lost one, a client came back, I quoted the lender, client client came back and said, I found a lender, or I don't know why a broker would do a lender. I found a lender that will do it much cheaper or better. And then you look into it and you compare apples with apples and you go, well, actually, they're, they're valuing the property in a different way. 
okay it's not the same okay but unfortunately people don't give you that opportunity I wish we had more opportunity to go back to people because often when you deal with people you do a lot of work and then they'll just one line email if they if they can be bothered they'll put an email and go uh, not interested this has now been sorted out or thank you very much this has now been sorted out I've, I've, I've arranged it elsewhere with another broker or I've gone to the lender direct and what I don't want to do is I don't really want to go back to them and go Oh, what did you get offered? Because they, they're not comfortable. They don't want to give you the lender name. They don't want to give you that information. So it's a really funny one, okay? Um, and this is just experience talking because you almost want to go back to them and say, well, give me the opportunity. Let me know. Let me compare it. Let me break it for you and tell you why I believe I'm right. I may be right. I might be wrong. But they almost sort of shut you off and go, oh, I've, I've, that's been all sorted out. So um, learning from that though is it's really important because sometimes you generally someone gets a better deal somewhere else and you learn from that you go oh right i didn't realize they did that i didn't realize they had that policy and i've had i've had that a few times this year and and how you deal with the rejection of that is is really uh, it's really important and and you better yourself with it so just because a client does not want to deal with you or has decided to go somewhere else that's not a negative. That's actually a could be seen as a positive because as long as that client is willing to share why they're doing so, or Piam, you're an absolute. Blah, 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 we don't want to deal with you. Okay, well, fine. You know where you stand on that, or you know we've managed to do this because they've managed to do this, and we really could do this. Sometimes it could be as they've come in at an 85% loan to value, saying they've got 15% deposit, and then I've quoted them that. But then they've seen a rate from another broker at 20% deposit and they've said, well, I'll get the money from my mum and dad. But then they haven't had the conversation with you again. They've just sort of said, okay, well, I'll go with that broker. That's what they, it's ease. Okay. So I've learned, I've learned a lot from that this year. I think um, more than most, it's been very choppy uh, and choppy and chir chir chirpy this year. Um, buy to list. So another, another big sector that we've been doing a lot more on this year is dealing with landlords that are adding value to properties. So generally why a bridging finance or a light refurbishment product, they're buying properties, um, they are adding value to it, um, and then they're refinancing onto a buy to let. We've been doing a lot more of those this year, um, for certainly from a bridging perspective and to the, um, you know, whether it's a limited company or not. So I've learned a lot, a great deal around some of the problems with that with the bridging side of it, as well as on the buy to let refinance side of it. So um, I think that's been a, um, a certainly a biggest trend in the market. People, as people look for value, okay, um, I've seen a lot of clients, a lot of clients I deal with now live in the South, live in London, but they're buying in the Midlands and they're buying up North, they're buying cheaper properties. So that has its own set of challenges when you're dealing with cheaper properties. If you're doing it under a limited company, there's less choice, for example, on the low loan sizes. So um, it's been a good learning curve from my perspective to be able to help those type of clients um, better sort of, you know, better manage their finances, really. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I mean, the, the last point is all around COVID, guys. I mean, uh, honestly, I, I received I received an email back from a client yesterday. We're just going through the mortgage application and he said, sorry, Piam, sorry, I haven't been in touch. I mean, I'm in hospital with COVID. I mean, what do you do? What do you say to that? You know, we've been chasing, saying, can you sign this disclaimer? And can you sign that? Because I need to cover my ass on this and this and this and this. Um, and the guys, you know, what a lovely sort of, he's in hospital, literally sent me, saying, I know it's important, I know it's outstanding, but I've got COVID, I'm in hospital. So uh, the last point is really, and I've had a number of clients like that who've, who've caught COVID or have gone, you know, you don't hear from them for two weeks. What's happened? I thought we were there. And then and then you find out this is the situation. So um, this year has just been horrendous for all. Um, uh, I just keep you safe for there. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I hope we get through this together. And yeah, appreciate all the support and all the comments and everything you've done over the year. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.